Quote, bacteria in the digestive tract can be modified to increase the energy output via neurotransmitters to enhance physical, cognitive, and emotional performance. End quote. This statement came out of the DOD, Office of Technological Intelligence. I want to preface this report by letting you people know that I don't normally post full content on YouTube. However, the information that you'll hear and see in this report is too important to not. Please share it with everyone. With regard to the use of genetically modified mosquitoes and the outbreak of the Zika virus, you should be aware of the following information that is not being discussed. The reported use of these genetically modified mosquitoes is to wipe out malaria, dengue, and other deleterious viruses that are carried and transmitted by natural mosquitoes. The unreported use of these engineered organisms is that they can be used as a delivery system for bioengineered viruses, including those that target ethnicity, and these are classified as bioweapons. Now we can look at the roles and relationships of the key players involved. First, we have Oxitec, a bioengineering firm that focuses on creating genetically modified life forms and synthetic organisms like viruses and bacteria. In April of 2015, Oxitec released millions of genetically modified mosquitoes known as organism 0x513A into the ecosystem in Piracicabia, Brazil, despite dire warnings by scientists that sufficient controlled environmental testing had not been done to determine the long-term effects of inserting a new artificial life form into an ecosystem. Enter now Intrexon. Intrexon was featured at the 34th annual J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in Maryland this past January, and shortly thereafter, J.P. Morgan cuts them to a neutral position, boosting their stock price. Three months after Oxitec's release of organism 0x513A, Intrexon purchases Oxitec for $160 million in August of 2015. Given the disregard for safety and environmental responsibility, what did Oxitec and or Intrexon discover during the period from April of 2015 and August of 2015 to prompt Intrexon to purchase Oxitec for $160 million? By the way, this would be approval in 2015 to sell their genetically modified salmon in the U.S. without warning labels. Since then, Congress has placed a hold on the sale and distribution of the Aqua Advantage uh, genetically modified salmon in the United States until the labeling controversy can be resolved. Now, the Pentagon and U.S. intelligence agencies are conducting extensive R&D into artificial biology, uh, genetics, and DNA synthesis. It's important to note that throughout the history of these agencies, their MO has always been theorize, test on humans, and see what happens, all before regulators get too nosy. Throughout the reports I read, this phrase is repeated over and over again, quote, holistic engineering of biology, end quote. This is a marketing ploy to sell the general public on the acceptance of artificial biology as a natural and good thing. The definition of holistic means natural or whole body approach in the treatment of natural biological entities as a whole organism versus breaking down biological units into parts to be addressed individually. So the term being used holistic engineering of biology is an oxymoron because it's creating synthetic biology by engineering DNA and creating artificial life forms on a cellular level which defies the definition of holistic 
as it's breaking down naturally occurring life forms into the sum of their parts and then rebuilding or recreating them again from the ground up. Whenever you create an artificial life form and inject it into an environment, you are creating an invasive species as it is not native to the environment and it never existed in nature prior to being created in a lab and engineered on a computer. Organism OX513A, as Oxitec calls it, the genetically modified version of the Aedes male mosquito, was reprogrammed to mate with naturally occurring female mosquitoes, and the offspring would have a built-in genetic kill switch, causing them to die before they reached the breeding age. This theory, however, was dependent on certain environmental conditions, and something went very wrong in Brazil. Now, Brazil ranks number three in the world for its use of tetracycline in food animals. It turns out this antibi antibiotic renders the genetically modified kill switch in the mutated offspring of Oxitex organism in native mosquitoes useless. As it turns out, 75% of ingested antibiotics by animals is excreted in their waste and it eventually finds its way back into the water sources which are mosquito breeding grounds. Not only was the tetracycline factor known by Oxitec back in 2012, they released their organism OX513A into the environment anyway in April of 2015. It's been reported that every day since then Vans carrying hundreds of thousands of genetically modified mosquitoes per day have been used to infest the mosquito populations in Brazil. The 80s um, Aegypti mosquito used to create Oxitex organism OX513A is a primary transmission vehicle for some of the most deadly diseases spread by mosquitoes. It's a particularly hardy lion which prefers humans over animals and can breed in very small amounts of water. And it feeds or bites 24-7, unlike other mosquitoes that only bite or feed at night. In light of the Zika outbreak, Oxitec is gearing up to open a new factory to pump out enough genetically modified mosquitoes to cover an area of 300,000 people. The current field test of uh, Persicaba uh, has a population of 5,000. That represents a 60-fold production increase of their genetically modified organism in the environment. Another approach Oxitec is looking into is infecting mosquitoes with the Wolbachia bacterium, which doesn't infect mosquitoes naturally, as this bacterium, Oxitec claims, reduces mosquitoes' natural ability to pick up and transmit viruses. Now, Wolbachia is not a problem in humans, and it's predominantly found in mites and spiders and not in mosquitoes. However, research indicates mosquitoes artificially infected with the Wolbachia actually enhances the efficacy of West Nile virus carried by mosquitoes, making it more deadly. In addition, the Wolbachia bacterium is, according to Science Magazine, one of the most common infectious bacteriums on Earth, and it operates on a basis of manipulating the sexual lives and identities of its hosts, predominantly by causing sterilization and death in males. Wolbachia is a bacterial um, endosymbiont responsible for debilitating human conditions like river blindness and elephant stasis and heartworm in dogs. Could Wolbachia be engineered at the DNA level to affect human reproduction in the same manner it affects insects? Would mosquitoes be used as a transmission vehicle? Could contagion be spread from host to host versus bacterium to host? something to think about. 
As many of you are already aware, Bill Gates is a staunch proponent of global vaccination initiatives to improve the human condition. On the other hand, he also advocates for depopulation, citing, among other things, the cost of keeping people alive past their usefulness to society. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation provided $19.7 million to an international program to expand the production and the use of genetically modified organisms and DNA engineering. Oxitec received $5 million from that fund to develop another strain of their current uh, genetically modified mosquito. Back in 2009, Gates released a jar of um, genetically modified mosquitoes at a TED conference in Long Beach, California, to demonstrate, among other things, how mosquitoes could be engineered to do whatever they were programmed to do. Around this same time, he gave $100,000 to a Japanese R&D company to explore ways to bioengineer mosquitoes to deliver vaccines. I find this concept in and of itself maniacal, as there is no dose control mechanism for this type of delivery system. Would you take your child to a doctor every day to get an MMR vaccine? And the flip side of that question is, would you take your child in every day to get a microdose of a vaccine? As part of the Bill and Melinda Gates Grand Challenges Initiative, they're focused on creating um, new creative methods for cost-effective vaccine delivery systems, which include bioengineered mosquitoes, GMO foods that are impregnated with vaccines, and frequency tools to deliver and enhance vaccines applied to the skin and activated by lasers and or sweat. As of 2014, the Gates Foundation was funding 81 R&D endeavors in this area. In conclusion, you have to ask the following. Number one, the Zika outbreak was reported to have originated in Brazil, the very same area where millions of, ge of uh, genetically modified mosquitoes were released into the environment that were supposed to eradicate disease spread by mosquitoes. Number two, Contrary to the hype being reported, Zika does not cause microcephaly. It's been documented that the um, initial reports coming out of Brazil were skewed for effect. Of the 4,000 cases of microcephaly reported, only 400 were confirmed. And of those 400, only 17 tested positive for Zika virus. Conclusion? There is no scientific or statistical information that would indicate that Zika virus causes microcephaly. Number three, since Brazil joined the Super Bowl of agriculture producers, it's become a rampant user of toxic pesticides. In 2012, it surpassed the US as the largest buyer of pesticides globally. Brazil still uses pesticides that are banned in other countries around the world. Could these birth defects be being caused by the bioaccumulation of these toxic chemicals in the environment and in the bodies of the indigenous people? Was the Zika panic created to cover up that probability? Isn't microcephaly caused by an assault on the embryonic neurological development aren't many pesticides classified as neurological toxins. Number four, nature always finds a way to adapt. With the proliferation of Bt crops and Roundup Ready plants, there's an emergence of super weeds and insects that have now mutated and adapted to the synthetic biotech being used in areas where GMO is a big cash crop. These large commercial agriculture producers now have to resort to the use of more toxic pesticides and the use of more Bt crops in order to stay ahead of this perpetual cycle. Number five, as of 2014, Brazil ranked number two in global production of GMO crops. The U.S. is ranked number one by nearly twice the production output 
of Brazil. Remember this the next time you go to buy corn, soy, or canola products at the grocery store. Scientific studies on rats have already established that GMO diets produce tumors. Yet another study published in April of 2013 showed a direct correlation in the rise of neurological disorders and the explosive growth of GMO crops in various countries. Are GMO crops um, cross-contaminating other non-GMO crops in, this heavy, in these heavy production areas? Was the Zika virus panic created to cover up a global food and health problem that can no longer be denied? Number six, it's evident according to the graphs presented depicting the rise in human neurological disorders and the explosion of GMO crops globally that the neurological effects are cumulative in humans. Microcephaly is a neurological disorder. Would it not be in the best interest of companies like Monsanto, Syngenta, Dow Chemical to start launching a global pandemic campaign to misdirect people so they focus their attention on a virus instead of the food they're eating, the water they're drinking, and the air they're breathing. Number seven, symptoms of the Zika virus mimic that of the common cold and typically disappear in about five to seven days. Now, many people, 75% in fact, who, can t who contract the virus show no symptoms at all. I could find no reported cases of hospitalization or death occurring from people with a confirmed diagnosis of Zika. So, why the hype over a pandemic? Because there is no cure or vaccine? The common cold is a virus as well, and there is no cure or vaccine for it either. Codex Alimentarius is here. Total control of what you eat, drink, and breathe. But it's much worse than that. The codex or law will mandate the consumption and injection of synthetic organisms that will transform the course of human evolution into something that won't be human anymore.